Okay, so for the juniors out there, this is the calendar, and you can find this on the scores page of my website. Uh, and what I think is cool about it is it puts both the SATs, which is a college board exam, and the ACTs in one shot, so you can see. So basically, September to December, that's seniors. Right, so my seniors who are retesting are taking it up. Juniors start January. Now, you guys may remember, wait a second, Mike, we took, we took SATs in May of our junior year and then again in the fall, twice. That's true. You know why? Because they counted. But the old school wisdom was you wait as long as you can in your junior year to take the SATs because when you sit for them, those scores go to college. Whether they're good, bad, or ugly, they go to college. You can retake them in the fall, and even if you do 200 points better, which back then when it was a 1600 point test was a huge, they're going to see the bad ones too. So you wouldn't want to take them in January, you're only halfway through Algebra 2. Right? You're still reading, five, there's six more books in the English curriculum, you have six more books with a vocab to learn, your English score is going to go up. Wait till May. Okay? Now the rules change with score choice. With score choice, you can sit for a test, and if you don't like the scores, they don't go. Okay? So, and I'm going to say more about that in a second, but I just want to tell you, you can see that they're in cahoots. <laughs> um, they alternate months, January to June. Right? So January you have an SAT, February you have an ACT, March you have an SAT, April you have an ACT, May you have an SAT, June you have an ACT and a subject test. Now you could flip-flop these if there's good reason to, but typically this is the big SAT, this is the subject test, the reason I mentioned earlier you're studying for finals. Sometimes people flip-flop here, some of the reasons why. My kid has three APs that week, and I don't want them to have to take the SATs that week either, because they're only taking one subject test. That makes some sense. SATs, you know, if you're only doing one subject test, it's an hour. It's a much easier day. APs are a big deal. A lot of brain power. It's like trying to run two marathons the same week. Not a good plan. Um, but for most kids, this would be your subject test. Um, I just want to say one other quick thing about score choice, because it is very confusing. This is your first time through. Your head's probably spinning and it's about to spin more, but um, I just want to tell you this and you know you can ask me after or look it up, but the way it works is ACT is simple. If you don't like the score, it doesn't go. If you like the score, it goes. Boom. Simple. Subject tests work the same way. Let's say you take you can take one, two, or three in any one day. Let's say you take three, you like one of the scores, you don't like two of them, you can send the one. Where it gets a little confusing is with the SAT, the big test. You get three scores with an SAT, critical reading, math, and writing. You have to choose. I send all three or none per test date, which is a bummer. But so, for example, like if you do really well in math here, and then you don't do well in the other two, right? And then you flip-flop here and do well in the other two, but you have a bad math. You're like, I want to send the math from here and the other two from here. Can't do that. Now, what you may have heard of is the super score. I'll tell you about that. The way you get to report your scores on your common app is you get to put in your very best critical reading, your very best math, and your very best writing, which makes kids feel great because it's showing on the top page your best two scores, and they absolutely see that. But when they get the reports from the college board and they corroborate them, and they will corroborate them because, you know, kids are kids. <laughs> um, many schools say that. We don't really care about the writing. And I should also say this. Many schools are now SAT optional. Okay, and that list is growing year by year. Now, I'll also tell you, all the Ivy Leagues and the most competitive and highly competitive, almost all of them are required. The big name schools still want them, but more and more schools, all the UCAL schools, SAT optional. But I also tell students, just because they're SAT optional doesn't mean you can't send them if you did well. Right? It can count for you. Right? Um, and then some schools say, we don't really care about the writing. If you go and you listen to their info session, but here's the deal. When you want a score report set, it's your contract with the college board. You send them the money, and the college board, it doesn't even go through Glastonbury or whatever school you're dealing with. The college board sends them directly to the college. So they will send a report that will show the scores. They may choose not to look at it, but they're there. That's how that works. Quick word about SATs versus ACTs, because again, we, you know, we all grew up with just... If you grew up on the East Coast, you only took SATs. If you grew up on the West Coast, only SATs. So if you grew up in the Midwest or in the South, you only took ACTs. And in the last five years or so, we've seen an increasing trend towards taking both, because colleges couldn't care less which one you take. So you take both and you release the Irish one. Oh, before I get to this, I, I forgot to say, I just want to go back one 
One second. Here's my advice. Some of you are going to freak out, especially probably the student in here. But uh, here's my advice. I'm going to give it to my own kids. I promise you. This is what I'm going to tell them. The plan is, as a junior, you take six college entrance exams in your junior year. You take all six. One, two, three, four, five, six. With the caveat that when you get your number, you're done. Now, why would I want to torture a kid like that? Because, number one, very often we see a leapfrog effect like this. Number two, if you take the test and you don't do well, it doesn't count against you. Number three, um, I, I use this analogy. Imagine there's a dartboard over there. If you hit the bullseye, you can go to whatever college you want. And I say, now do you want one dart, two darts, three darts, four darts, five darts, or six darts? How many? You can have as many as you want. I mean, it's really that simple. Uh, number four, every time you take a test, you're getting better at taking tests. And taking a test in the Princeton Review Test Center or in the quiet comfort of your home is not the same as going to the school and everybody's biting their nails and everyone's nervous and they pass out the bubble sheets and quiet, no talking, ready, begin, pencils down. There's no experience like experience. You know, it's just like the only way over stage fright is through it. The only way over, you know, standardized test anxiety and standardized test uh, um, to get, you know, better at it is through it. You just got to keep practicing. So now here's, and, and number five, I can't remember if I was up to five or six, but here's the best selling point in the junior in the room can tell if this sounds good to you, but I always tell students that you really, it's so nice to be done with your standardized testing in your junior year. It is just huge. And if you talk to seniors, they will tell you this, that, you know, um, if you follow this plan, is it going to make a little bit harder junior year? Yeah, it is. But it's not like the junior year is a party, right? The junior year is no party. It's hard from the beginning to the end. It's a rite of passage. So another thing you can tell your kids, we're really proud of you. This is not easy. This is, you're being a grown-up this year. You're rolling up your sleeves and doing what you have to do, even though you don't want to do it. And that's, that's worthy of respect. Yeah. So just to clarify what you're yeah. recommending. Yeah. That they basically almost take an SAT, let's say, almost every month. Yes. And then when they apply to colleges, just send their top score. Very top score, right. Okay. That's it. Okay. And if you do this, it's very likely you're going to be done. Now, what does that do for you? Well, number one, you enjoy the hell out of your summer. <laughs> number two, when you come back in the fall, all you really have to focus on are your applications and visiting schools and interviewing, right, where your focus should be attention. Uh, uh, your focus, your attention should be focused. Um, I did say I was exhausted, right? Um, there's a lot to juggle. You need to get really good grades your, at the beginning of your senior year because colleges will look at them. Especially if you apply early, your very first <coughs> quarter counts. They will call and say, how is so-and-so doing? She's applying early. You need to show them good grades. You need to visit colleges. You want to stay overnight because you want to see, should I apply early here or here? That, that's worth an overnight visit to make that decision. Uh, you have to write essays. You have to be interviewing. There's a lot on your plate. And do you want to add to all that, oh, and I have to retest the SATs, and I really need to do well because I didn't do well enough in my junior year. And believe it or not, that's the experience of the vast majority of American college-bound students. It's much smarter to do it this way. Does it make the junior year a little worse? Yeah, it does. But it's not like you're having a party if you don't do this. Right? It's hard either way. So just gut it out, get it done junior year, and you'll be so glad. Yeah. You said to take six tests. Are you yeah. talking six between the SATs yes, three and of the each. ACTs? Three, one a month. And then you also, don't yeah. they also take the PSATs? In the area? Yes, that's coming, that's in October though. Right. And, that's and then the subject project. test they should take? That's in, in June. That's a separate issue. And then they can retake those. Now, also understand this. When you get your number, you're done. Let's use UConn again because it's Connecticut College, okay? Let's say you say, they, I know they're looking for 580s across the board. So if I get 3600, that's 1800. If I get 1800, game over. So you might take this and get 1650, and you might get you know, 1700 when you convert it. You can go Google ACT, SAT conversions. That's what the colleges have, the chart. It's very simple. Right? And then here, let's say you get 1810. Game over in March! Right? So, and I always try and use that to fire students up early. The more you do now, the less you do later. <laughs> and it's true. You know, I'm not selling them, you know, baloney. That's the truth, right? I had two students last year who were very precocious, and this is highly unusual, 
but two students who finish their standardized testing in the fall of their junior year. Fall of their junior year. You know what they got for grades? One of them got all A's at the end of their junior year because they didn't have to worry about any stuff. The other one got all A's and a B plus. So there's a, there's a big upside to carving out extra time early in the junior year to get this done. I think that's going to be the new conventional wisdom. In five years, everybody will be doing it. But it takes time for culture to catch up.